the US president-elect Joe Biden has launched a stinging attack on Donald Trump, blaming him for encouraging yesterday's violence in Washington when hundreds of Trump supporters stormed the Capitol building, the very heart of American democracy. Joe Biden called it one of the darkest days in US history and said it was the culmination of four years of attacks by Mr. Trump on democracy, on justice and on the press. Leading Republicans have distanced themselves from the president, who has not condemned the rioters. And now there are growing calls for President Trump to be removed from office with just 13 days to go before the end of his term. Our North America editor, John Sopel, is at the White House for us now. John. Sophie, Donald Trump has always been able to act with impunity. But even he discovered there are some lines that he cannot cross. There has been a furious backlash to what happened yesterday and a lot of the blame attaching to him. There have been White House resignations. A cabinet member has gone and the former attorney general said he has betrayed his office. They can clean, they can repaint and put papers back in filing cabinets. They can easily spruce the place up. But none of it will remove the stain on American democracy. The Trump-supporting, Trump-inspired rioters in what's being described as an attempted insurrection have certainly left their mark. Who's out? The mob that descended on the Capitol building probably couldn't believe how easy their task was. Outer security cordons crumbled. The thin blue line turned out to be painfully so. And if you want one image to highlight the inadequacy of the police response, just look at this officer endlessly retreating one staircase at a time. Or in the chamber, plain clothes officers having to resort to barricading the doors, their weapons drawn to stop the rioters from entering. These are scenes that have played out in tin pot regimes around the world. But in America, this beacon of democracy, this protester, Ashley Babbitt, was killed. A military veteran who'd served her country in Afghanistan and Iraq. <laughs> only to die from a single gunshot wound fired in the hall of the House of Representatives. <laughs> Business resumed last night. Joe Biden certified as the next president. The current vice president condemning the mob in a way that Donald Trump couldn't bring himself to. To those who wreaked havoc in our capital today, you did not win. Violence never wins. Freedom wins. And this is still the people's house. And today, the president-elect made clear who he held responsible for last night's events. The past four years, we've had a president who's made his contempt for our democracy, our constitution, the rule of law, clear in everything he has done. And yesterday was but the culmination of that unrelenting attack. Oh, there we go. But why was security so lax? It's not as though anyone was caught unaware. This overwhelmingly white crowd was treated with kid gloves. Police seemingly posing for selfies with the protesters. But this is what Washington looked like last summer when Black Lives Matter protesters came to the Capitol after the death of George Floyd. The difference couldn't be more striking. And then there's the role of the president himself in inciting this coup attempt. We're gonna walk down to the Capitol. That seemed to appall those who've stood by the president. Rumors swirled that his fellow cabinet members might try to invoke the 25th Amendment and forcibly remove him from office. Maybe in response to that threat, Donald Trump finally, through an aide, issued this statement in the middle of the night. Even though I totally disagree with the outcome of the election and the facts bear me out, nevertheless, there'll be an orderly transition on January the 20th. Donald Trump couldn't tweet it out because his account had been suspended and today Facebook announced that it was indefinitely blocking his account, a hugely significant move. And the Democratic Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, whose office was yesterday occupied by this protester, is upping the pressure. I joined the Senate Democratic leader in calling on the Vice President to remove this president by immediately invoking the 25th Amendment. If the Vice President and the Cabinet do not act, the Congress may be prepared to move forward with impeachment. Four years ago at his inauguration on the steps of the Capitol, Donald Trump promised that the American carnage, as he called it, would end right here, right now. 
But last night, this is what his legacy looked like. John Sopel, BBC News, Washington. Well, the apparent ease with which Trump supporters were able to storm Congress has raised serious questions about security in Washington. Our correspondent, Aleem McBool, has been speaking to some of those caught up in the chaos last night. No remorse, no guilt, no regrets. Those who travel to Washington from across the country to protest are today sightseeing. Yesterday had to happen. The shock and disgust is felt elsewhere, not, not here. How do you feel about it all? I feel very privileged that I was a part of yesterday. Um, I fight for freedom and democracy. Even I, with everything that happened? Yes, even with everything that happened. We had the greatest president in our lifetime doing everything he could do, sacrificing his golden years to make this country what it, what it should be and what it always has been. He sacrificed so much, and that's why you've seen so many people here, they realize that. We are in. In those fateful hours, they'd been incited to march on the Capitol by Donald Trump. Those who forced their way into the building, believing they had the right to, to overturn the election result. That is just not how things are done in this country. Right. Lawlessness, storming buildings even, and that's this what's happened This nation today. wasn't founded on civility. This nation was founded on revolutionary activity. We became civil after the government realized that they got overwhelmed. So what happens now? I guess now we wait and see if, if they take us seriously because they saw how easily we were able to breach their defense. Well, in spite of everything we saw with our own eyes, a lot of those protesters who laid siege to the U.S. Capitol insist that it is the other side that is trying to seize power and subvert democracy. Among them, there's very little sense of embarrassment at the events here, if anything, a sense of pride. Proud especially that they caused politicians to cower in Congress. I've never had a panic attack, but I think that's what I was having. My heart was pounding very, very hard. I was having a little bit of trouble catching my breath, and I felt almost paralyzed. David Hartful Jr. works at the Capitol building and lives close by. It was scary, and, it, and, and when I got up this morning, I was like, maybe I should just stay inside all day. I really had that thought of, you know, am I going to be just attacked for just going and uh, paying bills? Like, that's a scary thought to wake up with in the morning. Life, of course, goes on, but many Americans have been left numb by events here. Others, though, those involved, have clearly been energized. Aline McBool, BBC News, in Washington. Well, our correspondent, Lebo Duseco, was in the Capitol Hill complex when the violence broke out yesterday, and she joins us now. And give us a sense of what it was like and what the mood is like now. Well, I was standing in this very same spot, broadcasting live on air when police came through and told all the media that they had to move uh, for our own safety. We were taken through to a tunnel which adjoins this building to the main Capitol building and eventually to a cafeteria where we were locked down for several hours. We were with people that work here, watching those scenes play out on TV. And they were telling me just how painful it was to watch. They have friends that work here, friends even in the police, and they were worried about them in danger. Today, very much a sense of of a city taking stock of what happened the day before. Uh, Joe Biden and even uh, Michelle Obama really uh, issuing quite powerful statements comparing also the treatment of uh, Black Lives Matter protesters by police uh, to the treatment of Donald Trump supporters yesterday and asking questions about how those people were able to get into these buildings. Never to second on Capitol Hill. Thank you. Well, the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, has condemned the violence in Washington last night and said President Trump was completely wrong for encouraging people to storm the building and cast doubt on the election result. Leaders around the world have widely criticised the riots, as our diplomatic correspondent James Landell reports. To a world that has traditionally seen America as a bastion of democracy, these images have provoked shock, disbelief and condemnation. And to a prime minister who made it his business to get close to Donald Trump, it was a moment to cut loose. He encouraged people to uh, storm the, the Capitol and insofar as the, uh, the president consistently has cast doubt on uh, the outcome of a free and fair election, I, I believe that that was completely wrong. I think what President Trump has uh, been saying about that has been uh, completely wrong and I, and I un unreservedly uh, condemn uh, encouraging people to 
behave in the disgraceful way uh, that they did in the capital. Some leaders tried to rally support. What happened today in Washington DC is not America, definitely. We believe in the strength of our democracies. We believe in the strength of American democracy. But Germany's foreign minister compared last night to the burning of the Reichstag in 1933 that the Nazis used as an excuse to seize power. And the Chancellor pointedly blamed Mr Trump. Doubts about the election outcome had been stoked, she said, and that created the atmosphere that made the events of last night possible. China's foreign ministry compared the chaos at the capital to the storming of Hong Kong's parliament in 2019, when a spokeswoman noted dryly, no one died. We hope, she said, that the American people can enjoy peace, stability and security as soon as possible. Beyond Iran's president said democracy had left America fertile ground for populism that had led the country to disaster. What we saw in the United States yesterday evening and today shows above all how fragile and vulnerable Western democracy is. Its foundations are not solid. The events of last night may have changed the way the world sees America, but how much of these pictures also damaged democracy itself at a time when the idea is being challenged across the globe? James Landell, BBC News. Well, let's go back now to our North America editor, John Sopel, in Washington. And President Trump leaves office in 13 days' time. What happens then? Is a line drawn after these shocking events we saw yesterday? No, I'm not sure they are. Donald Trump got 10 million more votes than he did in 2016 in November. There are millions of Trump supporters who probably are applauding what happened yesterday. And the sense that I have in Washington is that people are unrepentant. And it's like people are talking two different languages. If you hate Donald Trump, you think the election was fair and reasonable and everything unfolded in a proper manner. And if you're one of the Trump supporters who on social media and in this ecosystem, all you're getting is a diet of fraud and lies and deceit and rigged voting machines, then you don't believe it. And I, get, I when we spoke earlier, Sophie, I was being heckled by some Trump supporters. I tried to engage with them after we'd done our live. And I said, look, but the Attorney General has said it was safe. The head of cybersecurity said it was safe. The judges have said it was safe, appointed by Donald Trump. Republican lawmakers have said it was safe. And they say that see that as part of the conspiracy that is trying to rob them and pull the wool over their eyes. And I think getting people to calm down will be Joe Biden's biggest task when he becomes president. Whether he tries to take action against Donald Trump or let him go off into the sunset quietly, which I'm sure is the Democrats' dream, would be their preference. But will it happen? John Sopel at the White House. Thank you.